because you didn't you call for the army to be consulted on the interim administration that the caretaker government didn't you call for the army's involvement in but that and that was rejected i i did i i did say initially but at that time when we were on that peak of the hour so insisting on this aspect would have invited the intervention of military and would have derailed the democracy. This was neither in so my favor, in the nation's so favor, in, in the case, Pakistan favor, no. But you've just said you're not in favor of the military being involved in Pakistani politics, yet in those discussions with the Mil government, you said you wanted no. the Mil army to be consulted. I don't, we don't consulted. want military intervention. Okay, you didn't get that. But let we me don't put this want to you. military takeover. You talk, you talk about the judiciary. Yes. Salman Akram Raja, a senior lawyer at the Supreme Court, said, the deal in practice will have no effect because it doesn't really change things very much. It's just a face saver that allows Tahir al Ghadri to leave Islamabad. That's all it is. And you have no mandate uh, in the Constitution to make these demands, furthermore, he says. No, every citizen has a mandate. Every citizen. Our Constitution of Pakistan is in my hand. It does not give the sovereignty to the government. Sovereignty in Pakistan does not rest in the parliament. Okay. Sovereignty, according to the preamble and the first article of Pakistan, originally vest in the people of Pakistan. And, and they all will get people the of Pakistan and not okay. the member of the parliament. And, they will get the and this is exercised by the chosen members as a sacred trust. And they so will people, get the every citizen of Pakistan being the member, fundament, is his fundamental right. He can ask for democracy. He can claim and he can peacefully protest for rule of law. He can peacefully protest for getting the human rights. He can stood up against corruption. He can stood up for the implementation of constitution. He can stand up for the stabilizing and sure. purifying the process and, 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 of political and, and, voters, and democracy. And the voters so these will are decide. the rights of citizens All of right. Pakistan. And the voters will decide when those elections take place and, and, and we, we will see what happens. You've also that's, mentioned that's, terrorism. That's right. You've mentioned terrorism, which of course is, is a plague for Pakistan. Uh, sadly, on a regular basis, we hear about people being killed in terrorist acts. You say you want to reclaim Islam from the terrorists, the extremists. Do you believe that Islam is in the hands Absolutely. of the extremists and the militants? You do. But aren't the vast majority of Muslims it peaceful, is being loving? Misused. But the vast majority of Muslims are peaceful, loving people. This is just a tiny minority, even in Pakistan itself. You have seen, we were there for four days. Such a big crowd of the people, ladies and boys, there was no, uh, any kind of violence. Any kind of violence didn't take place for the four days. Long march continued for 38 hours on the road. There was no violent act. Yeah, it no, means no, the I'm nation of Pakistan now, primarily matter. is peace yep. loving. I'm, I'm asking a different matter because we know in March 2010 it, you issued a 600 page fatwa saying, and I remind you what you said terrorism is terrorism, violence is violence, and it has no place in Islamic teaching, and no justification can be provided this is, this for is, it. Yeah, so I want this to is ask my you faith. Now, yeah, as a this, Muslim cleric, do you, do you believe that yeah. Islam is in the hands of the extremists and the militants? Because I put it to you that that is just a minority when you look at the worldwide community of Muslims. Unfortunately, Islam is, has been hijacked, its ideology. The concept of jihad, the concept of sharia has been hijacked and it is being misused by the terrorist people. Those who are doing their violent activities against the peaceful people, peaceful Muslims, peaceful non-Muslims, minorities, everywhere. This is not an Islamic practice, not permissible, neither according to Quran, nor according to the Sharia, nor according to democracy, nor according to the Constitution. But unfortunately, why I stood up against the, this present system for the last five years, the parliament is there, but they were never able to pass the national policy against terrorism. They never the passed the law says, to off the counter government terrorism. Consistently so they says are not. They have no sorry, if I wish, interrupt you here. They have no the ambition to eradicate the terrorism. No, guys, the, the government has consistently said that it is opposed, obviously, to the acts of terrorism, and uh, it, it really does, obviously, condemn every act of violence that kills innocent civilians. They say that on a regular basis. But I just want to ask you, picking up on this, I'm not condoning violence myself. But when, what do you say to somebody like Ahmed Qureshi, as a, a conservative commentator based in Islamabad, when he says clearly suicide is outlawed in Islam through very clear injunctions in the Quran fighting and dying in, in self-defense however is not so he says if it means killing the innocent if it means attacking invaders or occupiers sometimes you see violence being perpetrated for that reason so the question is this is violence committed by Muslims in your view always animated by by Islamism by Islam or can it also be sometimes for what people might call nationalist reasons 
please let me explain the first part and then I come to here. The government is always saying and condemning terrorism, but government is not for condemnation. Government is not to say the things. Government is to act. Government is to practice. Government is there to enforce. For the five years, they are unable to okay. pass the but law against terrorism. This, so what is the point to just say, but we don't, we don't okay. terrorize? Okay, if you could briefly now, just address the second point, Now coming to that point, violence, to your second part, violence is always violence. Nobody is allowed to act to commit any act of violence on any person in any way, even if there are other, you are only allowed to fight against the combatants in a battlefield as the armed persons, armies and the armies. You can fight for your defense only in the battlefield as with the combatants. You can't uh, commit any act of violence against any non-Muslim, whether he belongs to a country who is already has uh, you can say started a war on a Muslim country, okay, and but the peaceful people, the non-combatant people, they get always the peace and security. You are never allowed to get to, to, to perform any act of violence in any case. I reject that condition. That, a final that, brief that question. A final brief question. Seven years you've lived in Canada. You've yeah. come back now to Pakistan. Are you staying or are you going back to Canada? No, I, I'm now here. Till I complete the whole mission, we put the democracy on right track. We scrutinize the eligible people. We create the atmosphere for a, to bringing the social, economic, and political democracy. Thank you, Muhammad Tahir Al Qadri in Lahore. Thank you very much indeed for coming on Hard Talk.